Welcome to another coding tutorial and in today's video, I'm going to show you how to make these hypnotic flowers. Let's start by creating just one circle. First, we're going to draw out a circle using a set of points. So I'm going to declare two arrays, one called X and one called Y. And these are going to be the two arrays that store our X and Y locations of each of the points. And then the third variable is going to be called points. And these are going to be the number of points that we're going to create to make up a circle. So let's start with 10. Inside the draw function, I'm going to write a for loop from let i equals to 0, i less than the number of points, i plus plus. I'm going to use the concept of trigonometry to convert from polar coordinates to Cartesian coordinates. And I've made a video that explains this whole concept. So if you want to get a better understanding, be sure to check that out. So essentially, we're going to set x to be equals to r times cosine of angle and y to be equals to r times sine of angle. Now we're going to set r to be equals to how about 100. So this is going to be the radius of this circle. and we also want to set what angle is going to be. We want to set angles to be i divided by the number of points times 360. So this is going to allow us to evenly space the points. All right, let's try that. Oh, <laughs> silly me. So we need to draw something too, right? So we're going to set each of these points inside the function called vertex. So vertex allows us to draw points. So this is going to be x of i and y of i. And if you click play right now, you don't see anything because to use the vertex function, we need to use two additional function called begin shape and end shape. Right? So these two functions tells us that, hey, we're about to draw a shape using these points, these sets of points. And then after we draw all of these inside the for loop, then end the shape. So let's run. So First, let's move everything to the center of the canvas. So we're going to use the origin point from the top left corner to the middle point here. So translate it to width divided by 2 and height divided by 2. Perfect. And you see this whole thing that is not a circle. And that is because we're using angle between 0 degrees to 360 degrees. And that is in the degrees mode. So we need to also set the angle mode to degrees. All right, so now two things that I want to tweak. One is I want to also set no fill for this. And as you can see, the first and the last point are not connected. And to connect them, we just have to put in an argument called close in the end shape function. All right, so as you can see here, it's not really a circle, right? And that is because the number of points that we use right now maybe is too small, which is 10. So what if we do 100? That's a better circle. Next, to make it look like a flower, what we're going to do is that we're going to change the radius here. Right now, the radius is set at 100. So we don't want it to be 100 throughout this whole circle. So what we're going to do is that we're going to add. How about we declare this variable as flower? radius and we also need a parentheses around here and I'm going to copy and paste this for the y part all right and then let's set flower radius to how about 50 and if we were to run this it just make the circle bigger and that is because the flower radius here has a constant value and that's not what we want we want to vary this value here flower radius in a wavy pattern so what we can do is that we can set this to an array and then inside the for loop we're going to say f underscore radius equals two and we're going to use a sine or a cosine function to get that wavy pattern how about we set the amplitude to 10 then multiply by let's do how about cosine and then just do angle the same angle as this one here and then let's run what you see here is still just a circle right but actually let me show you something so we're going to set the stroke here to the color red and then 
this next one, I'm going to set it to black. So basically, I'm going to show you two sets of circles, one with the F underscore radius and one without. And as you can see here, if I were to draw an ellipse at the center of the canvas, you can see that our new circle basically just shift to the right, right? By adding this F underscore radius at a specific cosine function, it just moved it to the right, but it didn't do the flower pattern that we want. And that is because we're only just drawing one period. So this equation outputs the number between negative 10 and 10. So what we can do is that, what if we set period, right? And then we multiply the period here. And right now the period is one. So we have the same thing, but what if we do two period? All right, what if we do three? So the period is the number of times that we get the value between negative 10 and 10, because right now our amplitude is at 10, right? So if we just keep increasing this, we get a shape that looks more and more like a flower. And I also want to set actually F underscore M to be 10. So instead of just hard coding this number here, all right, and then we can change this to what if we do 15? So this is just depends on what you want your flower to look like. All right, so I'm going to delete these part out and then set this to black. So before we start making a bunch of these flowers, let's figure out how to move this one flower. So all we have to do actually is add a value here so if we add let's create a new variable let's call this variable how about rotate and rotate starts at zero actually i might not be able to use the word rotate let's just do rod i think it might be okay let's do rotate and then outside of this in shape function we're going to rotate it by a specific speed let's do one all right use this change of value rotate so i think we cannot use the variable called rotate so let's just do rot oh i think i cannot do rotate because okay i just want to see All right, so I could use the variable called rotate and that rotate is gonna be the variable that we increment one degree at a time to get this rotation that you see here. Perfect. Now we can make a bunch of flowers. Let's start by creating a class called flower. So you come here, click a plus sign, click create file, and then let's call it flower.js. Before we start writing a class, let's go to index.html and then copy and paste this line of code change the name of this file to whatever the name of the file that you just created, in my case, flower.js. And this is how you integrate a new JavaScript file into your program. All right, let's go back to flower.js. We're gonna start writing a class called flower. We're gonna have a constructor function and we're gonna have a function called display. So we can go back to sketch.js and then we can copy this whole thing up to here. All right come to flower.js and then paste it inside display. Inside the constructor function, I'm gonna declare the X and the Y arrays, right? And then let's put this X and this Y here. And then we're gonna declare F radius, right? Which begins at zero. And, and then we're going to have f of amp. Let's set it to how about 10. So we can do this, this dot f radius, this dot f of amp. Also, this dot r for the radius of the circle, right? Actually, I'm going to set all of these as arguments or parameters inside the constructor function. So f radius actually this one i don't need f of amp 
the reason I don't need this is because it's being calculated here and then I also need period which is going to also be a parameter here so we'll have R we have F of M and then we have F period right and then for this F of radius we're gonna initialize it at zero and then I want to also set one more thing which is the speed here let's do this dot speed and that's going to be another parameter also all right so we have X and Y and then R so these are the initial circle we have these variables for the flowers and then this is also for the flowers and then we have the speed that moves the whole flower all right let's try going back to our sketch.js actually we can also set points here too so this dot point is going to be another parameter so here okay so now if we go back here we can erase all of this all of that actually everything all right and then i'm going to just draw one flower i'm going to call it f and then f is going to be a new flower right now let's go back here so we need what so i'm going to copy and paste this so we need r so let's set r to 100 the number of points also 100 the amplitude of the flower we set it to 15 period how about seven and then speed let's just do one and then we're going to display the flower okay so we need this dot points here this dot points here let's try that period okay okay actually i cannot use the word or the variable called rotate so actually let's just use rot how about that and set rot initially to zero rot is not defined so Okay, so now we have an additional variable called this dot rot for the rotation of the flower. Perfect, so now our flower is moving. All right, now let's make a bunch of flowers. So I'm going to change from F to flowers and it's going to be an array. And then I'm gonna create another variable called num. And this is gonna be the number of flowers that we want to create. How about we start with just five? That sounds like a good number. So let i equals to zero, i less than num, i plus plus. So we're gonna create a total of five flower objects, right? So we can just copy and paste this. Then flowers of i is gonna be a new flower object. We want the radius to be the same, the number of points to be the same. 15 is, 15 is what? Amplitude is still okay, period, can be the same, speed can be the same. Actually, the radius should not be the same, right? Because if we give the radius to be the same for all flowers, that's the radius of the initial circle, then let's see what's gonna happen. You just see one circle. That's not what we want. What we want is, how about we subtract it by i times 10 so each of the other flowers will be or will have smaller and smaller radius that looks good maybe we start with how about 140 so it's a bit bigger okay 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 all right so now comes the trick which is how do we get that hypnotic look so what we need to do is we come back to flowers and we're going to instead of doing no fill we're gonna fill it with the color white. Nothing happens yet, just wait for it. So we do no fill. Hmm. Um, not no fill, I mean no stroke. Looks like just one flower. 
but now I'm going to use a function called blend mode. And the argument that I'm going to give is called difference. Blend modes is a function that blends the pixels in the display window according to the defined mode. And the mode I'm using is called difference. And difference subtract colors from the underlying image 2D. So we're not going to go into the details of this blend mode right now. But by using this difference mode, it gives us that hypnotic look. So just be warned, what I'm about to run might give you a little bit of a headache. So close your eyes for maybe five seconds if you don't want to see that. One, two, three. All right, and that is because we need to put in two functions, push and pop. And by putting in push and pop, it clears out all of that craziness that you just saw. All right, so now that we have this, I'm going to go back to sketch.js and a few things that we need to tweak to get the final result. So first, I want to set my background to black. All right. I also want to set the speed instead of a constant one. I want to change it to be based on which flower it is. So I can do I times maybe a constant of 10. No, actually, let's just do 0. Point. Let's just do 1. So as you can see here, the biggest flower doesn't move, and that is because when i equals to 0, i times 1 is 0, so the speed is 0, and so it doesn't move. So we can change it by do i plus 1, and so all the flower actually moves, but at a different speed. But it's going a little bit too fast to my liking, so I'm going to change it to how about 0 0.1. That's a bit better. I like that better. I also want to change the number of flowers to 15. And there you go. So this is the hypnotic flowers that you saw at the beginning of the video. And it looks really neat. But before I end this video, I want to show you another cool trick. So instead of having all the flowers move in the same direction, I'm going to write an if statement. And I'm going to use an expression called i mod 2 equals to 0. So mod is an expression that checks whether i divided by number of two, how many remainders is left. For example, if i is three, i divided by two has a remainder of one, right? That means it's an odd number. But if i equals to, let's say four, four divided by two is two, and there's no remainder, that means it's an even number. So the answer is zero. So this expression checks if it is an even number, and if it is, then we're going to declare flowers the same way that we just did. But if not, if it's an odd number, I want to, instead of incrementing the speed in the clockwise direction, I'm going to change it to a counterclockwise direction. And this is what happens. Looks really cool. So this is when you finish a piece and then you just kind of play around with different variables and sometimes you get this unexpected result that is really cool. I love this piece because it's using very fundamental concepts of how to convert from polar coordinates to Cartesian coordinates to draw points and how to use the sine and cosine function to create the wavy pattern of the flowers. And when you put these concepts together, you can create some really cool stuff. So give this one a try.